People in Shadyside grew up hearing the stories about Fear Street, about people who wandered into the woods there and disappeared forever, about strange creatures that supposedly roamed the Fear Street woods, about mysterious fires that couldn't be put out and bizarre accidents that couldn't be explained, about vengeful spirits that haunted the old houses and prowled through the trees, about unsolved murders and unexplained mysteries. Creeps, welcome to Library Macabre. My name is Cameron Cheney, author of Autumn Crow, and today is the start of my Thanksgiving break, and I'm sick. First break I get in a while, and I'm like, yeah, not feeling, not feeling great. It's fine, I'm just gonna spend today in bed, and I thought, you know, what better time than to start my reading vlog for my Thanksgiving break. So there's a, there's a, there's a series that I was doing. <laughs> A couple of months ago, you guys probably remember it. It was over the summertime when the Fear Street movies were coming out on Netflix. And yeah, you probably have already guessed by the t-shirt that I'm wearing. Uh, I'm back with the Fear Street vlog. Those were some of my most popular videos from this year were my Fear Street reading vlogs. They were so much fun to do. I was seriously just in my element. I was doing so well. I felt good. And you know, I was just reading a bunch of Fear Street books and revisiting my childhood while watching the movies on Netflix. It was a whole lot of fun. And if you have not seen those videos, of course, I will leave a playlist down below in the graveyard where you can watch them. The reason why I'm choosing to do Fear Street over my Thanksgiving break is because Fear Street is one of the things that I am most thankful for this year. It's gotten me through a lot, <laughs> just getting to go back and read these books from my childhood and to watch the movies on Netflix. Even if they weren't perfect movies, they still made me very excited and I still did enjoy them. And now we've got like Fear Street merch and I've been going back and collecting the books that I was missing and it's just been a lot of fun. So it's it's one of the things that I am definitely most grateful for in 2021. And also, I think Fear Street is my chicken soup for the soul, <laughs> especially since I'm sick. So it's, it's a good choice. I think it's a good choice. So of course, when I started my vlogs, I started reading the books from the very beginning, from the very first book, The New Girl, and reading all of the Fear Street books in publication order. So I got up to book number, I think it was book number 10, and then I jumped forward a little bit. So that is Fear Street, The Fire Game, book number 11. This is one that I skipped just because, I don't know. The cover wasn't calling out to me and there were some other books I was more excited to read, like Lights Out and everything like that. So I did skip this one, but I went ahead and read it like a couple months ago. It's about these kids who are kind of like daring each other to start fires and stuff starts getting out of control. I actually really enjoyed it. And I wanted to just kind of update my thoughts on this one. Also, I read The Secret Bedroom, which is number 13 or 14 in the series, I think. I just was in the mood for more Fear Street a couple months ago and I read this one too and loved it. It's about a girl who moves into a new house and she finds out that there's this secret bedroom in her attic and there's like a ghost in it and it gets really weird. <laughs> it's, a, it's a bizarre one and I loved it. I thought it was just trippy and bonkers and trashy and just fantastic. Put a smile on my face. The next Fear Street books in my queue, the next ones in the series are for one, this one right here, Silent Night. This will be a reread for me. I read this one when I was a kid. I read all the Silent Night books when I was a kid. Loved these. Not only are they my favorite of the Fear Street series, but they're some of my favorite books in general. This one's just so good. So that's the next one in my queue. The one after that in the series is, I forget which one, because they aren't numbered. Um, One of these. <laughs> I think it's this one. I think this is the next one, the ninth. So I just got lucky pretty recently and found this on eBay. And this is one that I've never read. So I'm really excited to dive into this one. I've always wanted a copy. I was just never able to find one. So I finally got a first edition of that. Then another one. <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. Hold on one second. All right, moving on. The Prom Queen. This is one that I've never read and I'm really excited to get to this one. I've, I've always wanted to read this and I don't know why I didn't read this as a kid because I've always owned a copy of this book. So here we go, The Prom Queen. These are the three Fear Street books that I'm going to be reading over my Thanksgiving break. I'm gonna get some lunch and some tea and then we're gonna settle down and we're gonna read Silent Night and we're gonna revisit Reva Dolby 
one of my favorite, <laughs> favorite characters to hate because she's just so horrible. I'll tell you about that later. All right, let's go. Riva Dalby admired her reflection in the glass countertop. Only two weeks till Christmas, she thought, it's moving the eyeshadow. On Hello, creeps. It is almost one o'clock, and I have been reading Silent Night. I am about 70 pages in and loving it just as much as I loved it when I was young. I would have read a lot more today, but like I said, not feeling too great. So I have been kind of dozing off a lot today, watching shows, taking breaks, because I'll read for a bit and then my brain will start hurting <laughs> and I need to just like not think about anything and just slowly doze off. And I need to go to bed because it's really late and I'm so tired, but I did want to update you. So Silent Night, this follows a, a girl at Shadyside High School her name is Reva Dalby. Her dad owns the Dalby department store in town. Very, very nice department store. And of course it is Christmas time. So they're in their, their peak season where stuff's getting very, very busy. Reva works uh, at her dad's department store. She works at the uh, perfume counter or the nail polish counter. Let's just say she has a lot of enemies <laughs> at her school and at the department store. Reva is not nice. She's not nice at all. In fact, she gets a thrill out of being mean. She deliberately will be mean to anybody. And of course, that means that she has lots of enemies. In fact, in the first scene in the book, the prologue, she's standing at the, the perfume counter. She's, she's about to apply her lipstick and her lip starts bleeding terribly. And it turns out somebody put a needle in her lipstick. I was putting some lipstick on and then I was giving my phone. So you put, what'd you put on? Yes, big on. So things start out small and start slowly progressing from there. And I love this book. It is just so fun and so trashy and pulpy and just everything that you want from a book like this. It is so good. So I'm really enjoying it. Can't wait to read more tomorrow. But for now, I'm gonna get to bed because I am uber tired. Hey creeps, it is Wednesday afternoon the next day and it's around two o'clock and I've not really done much reading just yet. I've mostly just been cleaning the house, trying to get everything super cozy for Thanksgiving. That way I can enjoy a nice clean house for the rest of Thanksgiving break. So I've been doing that and I have to say, I feel a whole lot better after I got some sleep last night. I, I slept in until about 9 15 which is a little longer than i usually sleep i'm usually up by eight even on my days off uh, but i got a little extra sleep feel a whole lot better so yay i'm so happy about that that means i can enjoy thanksgiving and eat and not feel sick or anything like that i'm still cleaning and i'm going to be cleaning for probably another few hours but i do need to go with my sister taylor to our family home that we grew up in and let out the family dog biscuit he's a chug he is like my best friend I love that dog with all of my heart, so I'm really excited to go see him. It's been a little while since I've seen Biscuit. Is he there? Biscuit? Biscuit? Oh, there he is! Hi, buddy! You go go outside? Yeah. Give me him. Give me him. There's that tail wagon. Oh, come on. Let's go back. Oh, goodness. <laughs> He's a good boy. What a cutie you are. Why are you so cute? Oh, what a baby. Is this huge ball? I'm going to throw it. 
I'm gonna throw it. Breathe. <laughs> you gotta drop it. You gotta drop it. Good boy. Good boy. Oh, no cheat. <laughs> Look at those paws. Oh, you rolled it. <laughs> oh, you're so cute. Oh, my goodness. Happy Thanksgiving crepes well it's probably not thanksgiving for you at this current moment you're probably watching this a little while after thanksgiving but it's thanksgiving for me and i just wanted to say that i am thankful for all of you i know it's it's very corny i feel corny saying it but i i am very thankful for all of you you guys have given me so much support this past year it's been a, a pretty big year for this channel i reached twenty thousand subscribers i am now at twenty three thousand, i think which is Really crazy, it's been a long time coming. This channel is over 10 years old and I've finally reached that milestone. So thank you for making that possible and for all of the support you've given me on this channel and in my writing. Because uh, Autumn Crow has done so well this year and I've had so many other great writing opportunities come my way. And then of course there's Autumn Crow High, which should be coming out in the near future. I know I, I've, I've pushed it back a few times and I have a lot of reasons for that. Uh, I won't go into it. Anyway, it's Thanksgiving morning. I've already watched the parade. Before I start my reading of Silent Night, I'm going to watch <laughs> a very, very important film that I watch every year. It's a, a Thanksgiving classic, a, a family classic. <laughs> and that's Blood Rage. I love this movie. It is bonkers. I, I have a very hard time even explaining it to people. <laughs> But I would definitely recommend it. Well, I maybe not. I would recommend it if you don't have taste whatsoever. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and watch Blood Rage and then we'll get a little bit of reading in for today. The title says it's called Slasher. That's just another working title. Search Blood Rage if you want to watch it. Don't, don't search Slasher. It probably won't come up. Me. The day after Thanksgiving. It's not cranberry sauce. No, it's not. Should we call the police? No. My Brad. He's probably out looking. I'll stay here in case Todd comes home. But Terry, be very careful. He's probably very frightened. And Terry, please put on a sweater. It's called that. <laughs> the blue one. <laughs> that isn't cranberry sauce, already. Nope. That is not cranberry sauce. That is not cranberry, not cranberry sauce. sauce already. Nope. dad my stepmom and my uncle came i didn't know that he was coming so that was cool to get to see him they all left and it is about 8 30. i'm probably gonna turn in early tonight guys i am exhausted just from the amount of food that i ate like <laughs> just just eating the food has taken a lot out of me so right now i am halfway through i'm a little over a little over 110 pages and there's all kinds of stuff going on because not only do you have reva dalby's perspective in the book but it also shifts perspectives to her cousin who wanted to get a job at Dolby's department store. She called Reva to be like, hey, can I please have a job at my uncle's store? And Reva's like, oh, I'm so sorry. We're all out of positions. 
we can't give you a job. You're just gonna have to find a job somewhere else. I'm really sorry, you should have called sooner. Which is not true <laughs> because Riva has been passing out jobs all over school and uh, the, the cousin is now finding out about it and she's pretty pissed off. Anyway, I'm gonna go read a little bit more and get to bed so I will catch you guys tomorrow. Ah, good morning, creeps. It is Black Friday and today I'm not gonna go anywhere. <laughs> I was thinking about going to Barnes and Noble and I'm just not feeling it. I'm not really feeling like buying anything. So today is going to be just a really relaxing day. No stressful shopping. Just going to be here at home. I, I just finished editing a video, which is rendering right over here on my laptop. So if you can hear that fan sound, I'm sorry. It's it's rendering and it, it, it gets really loud when it's rendering videos. Got my coffee here that my sister Taylor actually just made. She can make a really mean almond honey latte. And that's what this is. Ah, it's so, so good. And I'm drinking out of my Mickey Mouse Disney Christmas mug that my sister Sophia got for me last year. I'm watching some booktube videos right now. Afterwards, I'm going to read a little bit more Silent Night. Also, just got a package in the mail. This isn't, isn't actually a prime package. This is something I ordered from eBay. And this is a Fear Street book, a very rare Fear Street book. So I thought this would be the perfect time to unbox it here in my Fear Street vlog. This is one that I've been trying to get for a while now, and I was so happy to find it for a good price. And it's in great condition. It's a first printing, so it's everything I was wanting. I wound up getting a really good deal on this, so I'm very, very pleased. All right, so this is one that I actually used to own a copy of when I was younger, and it wasn't a first printing, and I ended up selling off a bunch of my Fear Street books that weren't first editions, and I'm kind of regretting that now because a lot of the ones that I sold off were rare, regardless of they were if they were first editions or not so now i've been trying to get them all back as first editions and it's been taking me years to do that but anyway i finally got a copy of this is what i'm saying and that is high tide which is one of the super chillers this is a later book in the series this comes way toward the end of the series when the books start getting a lot rarer and harder to find so i'm really happy to have this really nice first edition at this point there are only let's see one two three i think four more of the original fear street books that i need to get and then after that my collection of original fear street books is complete and i will be very happy when that happens because i've been putting a lot of time and energy into collecting all of these so I'm almost there anyway i'm going to sit back finish watching some booktube videos and then we're going to dig back into silent night and see what riva dalby is up to it wasn't a fear that could be easily pinned down, but ever since she'd been a little girl, whenever Riva had been in the department store after closing, whenever she had walked the dark, empty aisles alone with the doors locked, the fear was there. Hello, it is Saturday night. I have gone a whole day without updating the vlog. Oops. <laughs> I finished reading Silent Night, and I meant to do some more reading today. And then I started watching you on Netflix. I, I hadn't watched it before, so it was my first time kind of getting into it, and before I knew it, I had watched almost the entire first season. So that's where the day has gone. <laughs> I don't do that too often, though. I, I work a lot, and I, I don't usually just sit down and binge watch a show like normal people do. <laughs> so it was kind of nice to do that on my break here, but uh, I am about to read the knife. I'm about to get started into this one, even though it is 9.30, so I will be going to bed pretty soon, but I'll stay up for a little bit and get started on this one. The thing about this book is that it is a lot shorter than Silent Night. Silent Night is a uh, super chiller, so it's a bit thicker. This one is very small, and the font is actually a little bit bigger than in Silent Night, so I will probably get through this one a lot quicker. I've also never read this before, so I'm really excited to get into this. It's I guess about um, the Shadyside Hospital, and I believe there's a plastic surgeon involved. I might be wrong about that. That's just what I have heard before. Uh, but as for Silent Night, I love this book. I still love it. I, I think it's great. It's one of the best Fear Street books. It takes so many twists and turns, and Arl Stein is, is pretty clever. 
with this plot twist. Also with it being a super chiller, the plot is a little bit deeper. There is a little bit more characterization. There's a lot more action. So I, I loved it. I thought it was great the second time around, just as good as it was when I was a kid. So I do recommend this wholeheartedly. And I think this is available um, still in print on Amazon. I think you can get like a, it's like a taller paperback, but you can still get this. It's still in print. As for the knife, I don't think this is in print anymore. It's actually a pretty rare one. It took me a while to find. And as you can see, uh, I have first printings of both of these books. And this is the one where they changed the cover layout. This is the layout that they used where they put more emphasis on R.L. Stein's name. They used this for almost the remainder of the series. But before that, for the first 15 books, the uh, there was a lot more emphasis on the Fear Street part. I think they changed that because R.L. Stein was starting to become a bigger name by then. So his name was more, more or less the selling point of the series. But honestly though, I much prefer when they put more emphasis on, you know, Fear Street, but that's just me. Anyway, I'm going to have a seat and get cozy and start reading The Knife for the very first time. Very excited. It's done. I have finished both The Knife and The Prom Queen. So first off, The Knife. I will start off by saying that <laughs> This is not about a plastic surgeon. I don't know where I got that from. Um, I think I heard it in some video and it, it's not true. Um, it is not about a plastic surgeon. It is about a hospital. This is about a girl named Lori. So of course I get a lot of Halloween 2 vibes from this because of course Lori Strode running away from somebody in a hospital. So there's a lot of Halloween 2 kind of scenes in this. Basically, Lori is a, uh, a volunteer from Shadyside High. She's volunteering at the hospital because she wants to be a doctor someday. And she ends up seeing that there's this young boy who is a patient at the hospital and something seems wrong uh, with him and his mother. And she begins to suspect that something's not right. There's also some weird things going on in the hospital. Really, it's hard to describe the plot of this book because there really isn't much of a plot. Uh, you just, you got Lori who feels like something's wrong and she's chasing all of these leads thinking they're going to tie together at some point and they really don't tie together until the very end of the book. It's entertaining overall, but it just didn't really feel like a Fear Street book to me. The writing felt different. Um, also, I, I mentioned this before, the font is a lot larger in this book compared to other Fear Street books, like in The Prom Queen. The book feels very rushed. It feels like it's a lot shorter than the other books and that it was just like, the font was made bigger to make the book feel like a, a normal length Fear Street book, but it's really not. I just didn't really jive with this one. I still give it probably three stars. It's still an okay book, but it's not as, not what I was expecting and, and not as good as I was hoping because I love this cover. <laughs> and this is one that I have heard pretty good things about and I've been, you know, on the lookout for it for a long time and I was really happy to get it because I was so excited to read it. But what I did care for very, very much was The Prom Queen, which is the next book in the series. This was just so good. So the very first line of the book, this is what we open up with. We couldn't stop talking about the killer. It had me from line one. I loved that. And that's really what you get with this book. You have this, um, uh, all of these candidates for prom queen, all of them are best friends, but they all have a little bit of drama. You know, there's some things hinted toward. And um, now there's somebody who's killing all the prom queens one by one. And, you know, the whole point of the book is who's going to make it to prom night, you know? Really, really good. Not supernatural like you would expect from the cover. There's nothing supernatural here. It is a uh, pretty much a slasher. And I really, really loved it. And we also get a whole lot more in the way of gory deaths. We did have a stabbing in this book. Wasn't anything too graphic, but in this one, we actually had a little more violence, a little bit more gore. That's something that the later Fear Street books have quite a lot of. But earlier on in the series, there wasn't a whole lot. This was where things started to kind of pick up a little bit more with the uh, the violence department. So I loved this. This was what I was hoping from The Knife. This was a Fear Street book. We had all of those you know, high school vibes and the drama. We had all of those staple Fear Street characters. We got to see uh, Suki again. Suki who pops up in some of the earlier books. She reappears in this, which was awesome. 
I loved that. So yeah, uh, five stars for this one. It was just a whole lot of fun and probably one of my favorite books in the series now. So there you go. That is the conclusion of my Fear Street reading vlog. I really hope you creeps enjoyed this. Please don't forget to give me a like down below if you enjoyed it. Leave me a comment. And if you don't have anything to say about these books, just say, hey, creep. That works too. Helps with the algorithm, the, the dreaded algorithm that has been tearing me down <laughs> so very much to the point where I'm just like throwing my hands up. I don't care. I don't care anymore. Thank you again for watching, and I hope to see you in future Fear Street vlogs very, very soon. Later, creeps.